Hi everyone, welcome back into the studio. I've really enjoyed filming uh, the YouTubes the last couple of months for you. We did the 30 Day Roses Challenge, the landscape, we're doing wildflowers. Um, we did this, we just launched the seascape that I just finished last night. Um, and I would have to do a couple of commission pieces. And so since a lot of you have been writing comments and writing me emails and uh, saying just how much you really enjoy it, I thought it might be kind of fun to take you in to the studio here a little bit behind the scenes of what I do uh, when I'm painting a commission piece. Because I have this commission piece I have to paint this morning, okay? Um, first thing about commissions. I've been doing commissions for thir about 30 years. And they were really, really tough to do. I don't, I don't, I don't do them that often unless I know the, the customer really, really well, because I've made some mistakes. Not really the customer's fault, my fault for not interviewing the customer thoroughly to get a better idea about what that customer was looking for. Um, and so it's it gets really hard. And when one of them that was a heartbreaker for me is I painted this very large, large tray. This was about 20, 25 years ago almost uh, for this customer and a very good friend. And um, I blew it. I did not listen to her completely. When she saw it, I thought it was going to be, wow, great and everything because I really liked it. And it wasn't what she was looking for. And because she was such a good friend, I sanded it all off and did it all again. Now, all of us as artists, we have horror stories and everything um, to do commission work. So one of the things I'm going to recommend, and I'll tell you a little bit about commission work as you get going, is you need to do a very, very thorough customer interview before you take on that commission to get a clear indication of what's going to go on between that client and yourself and that you know exactly what that client is looking for. Now, this particular client is a longtime student of mine, a longtime collector of my artwork. I know exactly what uh, she is looking for in this particular painting and she told me and I know clearly what it is. And she likes so many different things that I have a um, you know, a really good air, you know, I can make some mistakes as far as what is likes and dislikes, and she will still love this tray. That, you know, that said, I want to get as close to perfection for her as absolutely possible, so I do a very good interview. But, uh, so I have a clear indication in my mind exactly what this customer likes. She likes what color she likes, what style of roses she likes on uh, these particular trays, what kind of ac uh, accent flowers she likes, how much contrast, how much warm, how much cool color she likes. I know it all. Now, the greatest way to get some of that information is every single painting you paint, you take a picture of it and you start your own portfolio. You keep that portfolio and then when you're, you know, when you're interviewing a potential client, you go through, you have her pick out some of the, the, the things that she likes. You're looking there for colors, contrast, temperatures. You're looking for basically to narrow down the likes and dislikes of this particular person, what they're going to like. Um, so it's very important for you right now to take pictures of everything you paint and start your portfolio because you can use that for commissions and stuff, okay? All right, so let's get into the painting here. So I know I, you know, here's a tray. This is a beautiful tray. This is a hard, a, a very difficult tray to find. It's an 18 inch uh, wide tray here. Um, this customer is that special, so I'm going to uh, use up one of my stock of one of my beautiful trays for her. The background that I have here is a nice neutral background. This is going to allow my flowers to really come forward because it's all got to be about flowers. And a nice neutral background like this as opposed to like a, a blue or something like that. Now, I may put some blue accent tones in there. That's one color that she really likes. As a, You know, I showed her a whole bunch of paintings and she liked the ones with the light blue and stuff into the background. So we're probably going to do that. Um... But the neutral background that's on this can go in so many different rooms in so many different situations. It needs to be about the flower. So usually what I do is I gray down, neutral down my background. And I take it a little bit further away. You know, a lot of times I paint on lighter backgrounds. You've seen me paint a lot on light backgrounds. 
and this time I'm darkening it down just a little bit to go towards the medium background. This is a medi this is a mixture of our uh, light gray and medium beige base coat colors one to one, and it works absolutely perfect for it. Now I thought you know. For this, when I'm going to set up the composition, rather than just start into the flowers, I'm going to sketch it. Sketch it with a uh, charcoal pencil. Now, normally when I'm working for myself, I use a, I like the carpenter's pencils myself because I just do light sketches and all the pencil marks and everything cover up anyway. But this is a chalk pencil that will just come off with the rubbing of your of your hand and stuff, so you can take it off if you if you don't uh, you know like it or something like that later on. Okay. So sketching with the with the chalk pencil, a lot of times when I'm painting for myself or I'm just painting a piece that's going to go up into the gallery for sale, I uh, just go ahead and sketch with my brush or just go right into painting with my brush and you've seen me do that a lot. Okay, so I'm going to set up the roses. I cascade of roses that I have here. This is a larger tray. So one of the things I don't want to do is just make big roses. I have a difficult time myself if my rose gets bigger than my fist because my hand has a hard time turning that particular structure. So I'm going to add a few others in here. And I want to incorporate the the turning feeling of this tray. So I want my design to go with my tray. So I'm going to curve this down. Now my favorite, and I'm going to start right up here with the queen that's going to kind of control the composition. I'm going to center off center right up over here. And I'll probably set her right about somewhere right around here like that. No bigger than my fist. I like a rose that's right about like that. Now you have your you have your uh, way in which you can set the gaze of that particular rose. How do you want that rose to gaze? And I'm probably going to set her this way. Um, I, will, I want her off this way because I have so much more space here because I'm off center here. So this allows me to turn some roses down this way. And so if I turn her this way and turn and then put a bunch of roses this way, in other words, if I set the gaze here going like this and then continue going down here, I'm going to put a lot of power moving to the right of my design and I don't want to do that. This is going to be the largest rose. So if I set her gaze and the gaze is set by the center, those of you that are in the online classes and everything, you know that I drill that into you. I set the most important part of the rose, which is the center, the movement of the center, and the shadow of the bowl. That sets the, the main feeling of the rose. So that gives me here enough room to put in a secondary rose right in here, which I like, which will be just maybe a touch smaller. So this will be my big one. I'll set its gaze maybe out here, down like that, slowly turning some roses. Now I'm going to collide this, these two together. That's called formal. Putting things together is called formal, and that formality is, is a, a great way to set a center of interest. As I move away from the formal part of the roses here, I'm going to start to set some of these gazes down and then separate my roses out just a bit. So I might set, and I might set a little, if I get extra space out here, I might set a bud out here, out like this, or I might set a, some accent flowers or something like that. Coming down here, now I don't want to put the two roses right on the same level, another rose on this exactly the same level, so I'm dropping down just a bit, setting a rose coming out here like this, out onto this side here will be its, uh, its gaze here. So this main part right in here, that is really the anchor of the design, sits very formal, and then I'm going to start letting it slide off to the sides. Now, out here, to keep it looking from same to same, Maybe I'll drop one or two out like this, so I'll come out with like two buds out here instead of the big, instead of one. Now this allows me to come in here, down into here, and have some, you know, crossing kind of leaves or something like that in this area. I can push a rose, maybe a, a rose right back here at, that's way back into the back. That gives you more depth in your composition. Up through here, then I have to decide, you know, do you want some of these accent little flowers out here. These are great areas to put little accent flowers and stuff like that. So and maybe put some of those accents down here. And you slowly, you start to fill up the tray and you'll start to fill up with leaves and movement and, and everything. And so you get an idea here, you know, how you're going to um, proceed with your, you know, with your tray. So that gives me a, a pretty good idea. 
you know, color-wise. She likes everything, the yellows and the pinks and the whites. And so, you know, I'll key off of a color. For example, I want to tie my roses together in a composition here. In other words, I'm painting for a client that, you know, and I ask them, you know, like, what is one of some of your favorite colors? Well, this one is pink. So pink becomes a unifying color thought into my painting. And I go all the way back to when I, you know, I teach a lot of color theory. And I talk about uh, Frank Covino and the contemporary view of some color theorists and stuff. And one he always says that uh, a viewer will search a design or search something for their favorite color. If they find their favorite color in that particular painting, they'll like the painting. Because they search for color first and you know, and, and then go on design. Well, you know, roses, everyone likes roses, but, you know, if they see a color of a rose they really like, then they tend to buy that, that color. And uh, I, I classify roses, you know, you have roses of color, yellows, blues, you know, your peaches, I'm not blues, but uh, reds, your peaches. The, my favorite rose to paint myself is the white because it's neutral and I can cast a little yellow on it. I can cast some violets into it. I can cast some reds. I can really change that rose up by, you know, its secondary color that it, that is used. So pink. Well, pink looks great on yellow roses. It looks great on white roses. Of course, it's into the red roses. So if I keep pink and then I do some soft yellows and some soft white roses inside this or those colors in those compositions and all of those flowers carry a little bit of pink in them, the client's going to like it because they like pink. Okay, does that make sense? So that's one of the things that uh, I tend to do when I, I don't just make a whole bunch of roses together here with all different kinds of colors. I look for some way to unify uh, that, uh, those roses together. So that's something to uh, consider. Now, I may just go in here and check, and sometimes I do. Now, I'm going to be painting with my, uh, my flats, my old trusty fusion old old fusion this is a 10 fusion flat for my colors that i have out here this is my hansa yellow my darulite yellow my yellow oxide naphthol red light burnt sienna pine green phthalo blue quinacridone violet uh, red violet and a lot of white oh and one thing i was i showed you since a lot of you are following me now on on YouTube and following a lot of things I do and you're telling me you're watching all the paintings. You may like roses more than anything else, but you're watching landscapes. Last, about, oh, about 10 days ago, I filmed one of the paintings. I can't remember what it was. And I showed you my big, gigantic container of white. I use, use big containers like this of white because I do so much painting and white's one of the things I go down. I, uh, you know, it goes uh, let me say, I run out of really fast, right? And um, so I usually carry this 32 ounce container, quart container of it. And about 10 days ago, I showed you this thing was about halfway or so, this container, and it's almost gone. And uh, so if you look back, I can't remember exactly which video it was I filmed that for, but it was about not quite, maybe a week to 10 days ago, I filmed something and that's how much, that's how fast I go through white. How much painting that I do that I go through that much color. That's why I get out big things of color. So you see me put out a lot of these whites stuff, you know, all the time. That's one of the things I do. So what I'm going to do here first is before I even do any of my background manipulation, which I do a lot, you know, I approach paintings all different kinds of ways. Um, one of the things I'm going to do here, though, is I'm going to do a color check. And uh, what I'm going to do is set out, I'm going to take a light neutral yellow, which is yellow oxide and white, okay? Um, one, and I kind of look, do I want to have a white kind of a rose here? Or, you know, maybe I want to put a nice beautiful white rose right up here and um, to this one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at a soft yellow. And all I'm going to do is do a color check. This is me to put on the color here a soft you know I'm gonna keep the colors really light here and I'm gonna to look to see if my colors you know are gonna move well enough so I may want to put some yellow right out over here 
into maybe two little yellow blossoms. So these two yellows move over here. Now the tying color, of course, is going to be our pink, right? So I have I have um, that yellow. That yellow's moved really. That yellow's moved nice. Let's just move some white here. Now some of this will disappear as I go to do my background, but I'm just checking color. So if I come in and make a white rose here. Okay, so this will be my white rose, and this will be about the size of my white rose. I don't need anything perfect here. Well, we can even drop the brush and hit the tray there. Um, we can uh, just put on some of that movement. I like the gaze to set the gaze in. So my white rose is going to go there. Maybe I'll turn a white bud right out here. And that looks pretty nice there for... For those colors, so the colors it doesn't travel well over here, so I have to figure out something or maybe add some, and this is what I start to look at. Maybe make sure that there's white, more white into this one, so that white moves through, so my eye moves through the tray. You start to do this as you're as you start getting bigger paintings. Small paintings, small little ones, like we did with the 30 days of roses and stuff. We don't need to worry about that. That's a small painting. This is an 18-inch tray, it's bigger. So we have to worry a little bit about the movement of our color. And then we have a pink. We have a soft pink color. My favorite pink is two of these together. But that's, that's not uh, important, is it? Right? What's, what's important about the pink? The one that your customer likes. And, of course, she's painted a lot of stuff with me. And she always likes these colors, too. So I know this is her pink, too. So I'm going to look to maybe a pink, a pink kind of a rose here. And maybe we'll push that pink right down into here as well, into this one. And um, she likes pinks a lot, so we might push that down. But we could even give a deeper pink to a red. Uh, down. Let's tone it down a little bit of the the uh, green into that. Tone it down into a softer color, and that might appear down in here. So what I'm doing is I'm looking to see how colors are going to move. And you know, once I start some of these accents, like these are going to care all carry accents. You can see how that pink is going to move through the painting. So all these are going to carry. Now everything I'm doing here is going to cover up, but this this helps you kind of answer some of the colors or some of the questions that you're going to you're going to have as an artist about the painting about color movement. So I'm doing a color check here just to make sure everything's going to move. What do I want to do with these uh, you know outside flowers and stuff? Well, you know violets and stuff are really pretty. A violet tone is really pretty cuz a violet tone is um, I can do violets, I can do blues, I can do blue violets. A uh, lot of different ways that you can do here. This is just my phthalo blue and um, a little bit of quinacridone and some white. And let's just knock that intensity down for right now. This will all change. As a matter of fact, you know, a lot of this I'll be painting some of it out, you know, so as I do the background and stuff. But we can look to see what violets will look like in that. And I would probably want to carry that a little bit more to the reddish side. That bluish side's a little too cool. So this helps you see that right away. And you can see what those would look like out through here. And that those would be kind of pretty out there. It'd be different, very, very different. Um, and I can anchor, before I leave, I'll just anchor a few greens in here. And this, this puts into my mind one of the checks here now of what I will want to do with my, uh, with my flowers here. So, and there's lots of different ways. Do I do this all the time? No. I don't do this very often. Only on uh, commission pieces and stuff like that. My normal florals, I know where to go and I'll refine them as I'm going. Uh, but you don't want to get a whole bunch of work into a painting like this and make a mistake. So just looking at my greens coming around. And that'll be that'll be real pretty. But the one thing that I see is my white, you know, uh, I'm going to want to take my, my pinks, my yellows, and all of those a little bit more to the white into the front. To let the white also be a unifying color. So that white, see if I put this white on all of those, that's going to help unify all of those colors. Now... I know that looks absolutely crazy to you because you're trying to find 
perfect roses. I'm not, okay? I'm not. What I'm doing is I'm just checking the color and it gives me a better idea of where I'm going to go with those roses. So now in my mind, I know the queen of my roses is going to be my white one, right? And then I'm going to, and all those flowers are, my main accent color is going to be pink, okay? It's going to be some version of that pink, maybe leaning to the violets. That's going to be a, a very important thing. My main center roses are going to go basically from yellow to white, pink to white, okay? So they will uh, carry that white as a unifying color that gives me a better thing. So I look at all of this, and you can get absolutely crazy with it, but I'll look that this will be a very colorful, a very nice, beautiful floral. It um, When it all comes together and I make it look like roses, I, but I don't look at these are not roses right now. I'm looking at the color. How, how is color moving? And you see, out through here, this will look prettier or better if I take these violets to white. So if I'm going to use a lot of color, there's a thing in theory, color theory. If you use a lot of color, the more color you use, neutralize it, which is the whites. So you start to neutralize your colors a little bit more with whites. Otherwise, the painting can get real heavy. White is a neutral that is a very, uh, what would you say, it's a, it's a lifting type of color. It's a, a color that keeps everything light and airy, okay? So I'm going to set that brush down for just a second. I'm going to grab some of my uh, extender. I'm going to use some of this violet here. I'm going to go a little bit more to the blue side because the customer likes the blues. The customer really likes the blues, but I'm going to go blue with just a little bit of violet in it here. When I customer likes when I put those blues into the background here. So I'm just going to push a little bit of that around through the painting here like that. Okay. And add a little extender and uh, if I or water and thin that out and push I like the blues in this this uh, uh, medium beige color grades anyway I like that and then I'll soften the edges out here just a bit and you say oh there goes all your no that design is thoroughly implanted in my brain right now now I still may alter it or change it a bit and do a few things here and there, but that's pretty much thoroughly implanted in my brain. I want to keep a little bit more of a a uh, more opaque look right in through there. Let's drop a streak or so through here. Now, some, well, let's say most of that is going to disappear, but I do like some of those streaks and stuff like that to go through. So that sets up kind of what that is going to look like and I know for you because this is uh you know this is not your painting you you know you may be having a little bit of a heart attack right now right <laughs> you know and this is one of the reasons why I don't teach this way this is the way in which I like to paint but I don't teach this way because it will lose so many people right away. Because so what we do is we start usually right in and start shaping and building our roses so you can start worrying about that. Does that make sense? Okay. But here I worry about color more than anything else, especially if it's a, uh, a commissioned piece because the client is buys, and I find this very true, what Frank Cavino says, the color, client buys off color right all right so let's go in let's take some of this stuff let's find a good way to neutralize our grays here she keys off of pink so red and green is a great way to to uh, neutralize some of our grays and stuff here for our white flower I'm going to start right in with my white flower here and I'm going to push right back to that size again here Push this gray right in like that. Push that right out into that. So sometimes I will push in a little bit of extender into that if I want to keep that wet for just a bit. Uh, a lot of times I'm, you know, now I paint more acrylic. Always I keep this tray registered the way it's supposed to go. So it's, you know, that's the top of it. That's what's going to read more than anything else. She likes pinks and reds and stuff. So. Let's go first with a warmer red into the center of our 
white rose. I'll set up the I'll set up the first shapes of the roses here. First, I'll go warm. Now, the reason why I do this, a lot of you say in the 30 days, you know, we go right in, set the cool colors right in deep and everything. But this is a little bit more of a painting here. So we're going to work our warms to our cools. Temperature, I'm a big temperature painter now. So I'm going to work some warm color of my naphthol red, naphthol red light, excuse me, right in through there and push that in. Set that in. That's reds. Reds, the pinks are very important. So we'll do that. I'll cool down next. Let's go down into some quinacridone. We'll paint down in and lift out. Do not take out all of your original red. Leave some of that. That's why we put it on. So I'll leave a deeper bit of the cooler color there into the inside. Now let's go one more down. This is my dark contrasting color. This is your red violet. That goes deep down into the rose and does not come out very far. And then we will set it way deep but heavier over onto the shadow side, which I'm going to set over on this side. And I'll push it a little bit there. And I'll push just a little bit of that motion so that it... Uh, um, carries I like this type of stuff that's the that's the movement of a rose that I really like now I might you know I might uh, pick up and model through let's even add a little yellow to that just add a little bit of movement back up in here onto the light side not down into the shadow side just a little bit on the light side and just tap and move around let's go pick up some of our uh, white color here and we'll model that with just a bit of gray so I'm not completely but I'll let it go a little bit of that pink out of my brush here why do I let the pink come out out of this into this color because even though this is going to be a white flower my customer likes pink so if I let a color come out I'm going to make sure it sits towards the pink and I'm going to start to build this rose and I'm not going to build it perfectly light up there at the top. I'm going to do a lower value one here first. Set this down. Maybe a couple of uh, soft little petals here. Closing that down there. I'll paint the rose a little more complicated. In other words, a little bit more to that than I do on um, a lot of general roses that I paint. Uh, you know, this... You have to be kind of careful because people like different types of roses and everything, but I know that the ones that this customer likes. But I'll paint it what I call complicated in that I'm going to add a few more petals, a little bit more work, just a little bit more. And uh, then I'll get a little lighter here. We'll add some smaller, like, outside petals, and I'll push those right in. Let's just give an indication of some outside petals there and push those in here just a bit. And I'll blur that right back into to this softness. This customer likes the softness of the roses. So I'm going to make sure that the edges of these things stay soft. These are all things that I uh, look for, talk over with, uh, you know, inquire, trying to figure out exactly what this... Uh, this customer likes. Now I'm going to go back, restate a little more pink right down into the bottom of this white one here, and a little more contrast, maybe right down in here, and push that in. Now that goes real, real heavy contrast right there. So I might just put a little quinacridone on the side, which will which will lighten that up, and then right into a little bit more pink right there. So that I want that color movement, that heavier movement of color on that side of the rose, but I want it to be um, I want it to be less. I mean, I don't want I don't have all of my roses and stuff on here right now, so I don't want to have huge contrast, which was the first thing I struck that with. That's what happened. Okay, let's start heading to our whites here. So if I got a lot of pink in my brush, I'll neutralize it with a little bit of green here getting rid of that and heading this little pile back up over towards my grays. So because I want to start, and I'll use those two together, because I want to start getting 
this rose more towards the white. I have enough red and pink and stuff I feel into it right now. So I want to start getting it heavier white. And so I'll start pulling some of that. Let's just pull some of this out of the way here for a second. Set that in. Okay. So, uh, and I'll look for different ways to get more interest to a, to a particular rose. Um, you know, shaping the petals a little different here. Pulling in, pulling in, pulling out, uh, shaping them a little different. So here this is starting to dry, so I'm just going to shear off that. Now I could keep it wet, but I don't need to keep it wet. So I'm going to take a little softer here and extend that petal just a bit more, a little further out here. We'll let that soften back just a bit. Probably take it back with some negative painting a little bit. Don't grow your roses. It's very easy to get your roses really starting to grow, so I don't want to do that. Let's build um, some more front here to, to these petals here. So I'll go more light, pull that down. We'll pull it right down into the the shape of the bowl. Let the bottom of the rose here to the shape of the bowl. So sometimes if I get a good stroke structure here, building light right there in the front and pull down, I don't need to soften it with my finger. I lift up the pressure with my with my brush right there and I don't need to soften it. Let's put, put a little bit of heavier color onto the side so I can do a little chiseled edge right down, head right to the bowl right there. I'm going to pick up some more color do that again, let it run out of my brush as it goes around to the side there of that, right on that side. Now I like those little bit of streaks that are right there. I might leave those. If I was painting them a little, uh, you know, a little bit more softer, I wouldn't, but I'm going to leave those right now. I'm going to put one maybe right in here, just the idea of a petal right in there. Maybe soften that edge just a bit. And, uh, yeah, that'll work, and it'll make a nice, pretty, you know, the petals. And so, you know, I move from my reds, my pinks, I gray them down, heading more to my whites as I'm coming forward here. And I'm letting these colors over here tack up. It's because what, you know, that's why I'm working so much right here. I'm letting, because I put on a lot of color right here. You can see it's starting to dry up right in through there. That's what I'm letting happen because I am not a blender. I don't work wet into wet. I work dry. I set one petal up on top of the other. I'm a tone painter. So you see, I just push that right out of the way so I can set another petal right in there, right like that. I like that. I like my queen to have kind of a lot going on. She likes to be, you know, have a lot of decoration on her. So I'll pull out. Sometimes I'll just pull out like that and push that back in. Like that. Get, get that nice movement. But I want a little bit of texture and stuff on here. So, you know, a lot of people, especially if you're, you know, coming from oils and stuff, you know, you want to keep everything wet so you can work it. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I I let stuff dry up so I can work it dry because I paint a tone rather than, you know, uh, paint it wet. And if you paint it wet, you know, it, things can happen. Like what's happening right in here right now to my white. The second if I touch it one too many times, it disappears because everything here is wet. So the white just incorporates down and disappears into the rose. So you have to end up putting it back on. I'm going to change this a bit. It, it is just a little more color. Here. But you have to, um, um, you know, I have to be very careful of that, you know, touching it too many times if it's wet. That's why I like to paint acrylic where it dries, where I don't have to worry about that. So every time I touch this front petal, because there's so much paint here, and if I touch it too much, it just disappears. That front paint just disappears. So I have to do it again and again. Now, over here, it's a little bit drier. I'm going to go back into some of my gray and then over to a pink. But this time, I'll keep it cool because I'm over on the cool side of the rose. And I'm going to make a kind of a grayed pink color, maybe not that light. I just reached over and looked at that. And I want to have it a bit darker, maybe a touch of tone. So a little bit of green into that. Let's do an outside petal here and see where we are. That's kind of pretty. Now, I'll let this pink stay, and then I will, uh, 
you know, get it lighter as I come up to the main part of the bowl. I'll let this, you know, pull that in. See, so I don't lose that movement that's underneath there because anytime that you add white to a color, you're starting to opaque it. So you'll paint out what's underneath really easy. Unless what's underneath is dry, then you don't. Then you can pull right along it and shear it off and you soften it off. You don't lose it. So that's one reason why I don't like to paint wet. So this is all dry. So I set up these nice little pink lights right up on the edge of that bowl right there. That looks pretty nice. Maybe I'll take a just a touch of this pink and round down just a little bit here. Just a little rounding movement in there. Just like that. That's kind of pretty. If I, you know, there's a little bit of a cloudy right there. A little collision of it right there. I'll just take a little quinacridone. Just a touch of red violet into it and just go right over that just tap through and push again and I'll put the rounding motion back into the flower that I want oh that quinacridone is kind of pretty let's just set a bit more of that right into there maybe with a bit of that red pink a little warmer coming up right into here before it disappears a bit that's kind of pretty here and so, you know, a lot of times, you know, when I'm painting and I paint at the studio and I do those 30 days of roses, I try all different kinds of color combinations. And one of the things I'm doing is testing color combinations that I will use later on in, um, you know, paintings that'll be for commissions or, you know, for, for DVDs or whatever. Uh, I'm testing all of those color combinations and stuff, so... You know, using like the, the roses of the 30 days are great ways to test combinations of flowers and stuff. So let's gray just a bit of that here. We'll come over to this side and gray just a bit of that. And I don't want to lose that, uh, so I make sure it's all pretty much dry. I don't want to lose that, uh, you know, all that modeling of color underneath there that's pretty. Especially as I start to do this, add more white and lighten it up. I just want to keep that a little softer there. And I'll just build around. Let's put in a little bit, lift up right by the bowl. Soften that around. Here, I'll put a big soft rose here. You have to just and, uh, decide up here in the front. So I'm just going to... Sometimes I'll pinch wipe, I'll load that with the white and pinch wipe it just to load that brush with more white as if I'm going to lay on a petal. Pretty, pretty heavy petal. Let's, matter of fact, let's push up just a bit, right, like this. That gives me a little more shadowy room there. Now, if, you know, if you can't push up, if that white was dry on you, what you do is you just put a little shadow color and push up there. And I'll just drop in. A little bit more of this will make that go right up to the bottom of the bowl there. That's kind of a pretty little petal, but I want it to pull out a bit, so I'll take a little bit of this color and just pull out just a touch like that. Grab that, and then we'll reset this rounding right down into that, just softly pulling right down into that uh, and I like that kind of streaky. Now, how you get that is part of that paint is dry and part of that paint is wet. And where it is dry, it drags over it. And where it's wet, it'll soften into it. So I found I started to get those beautiful techniques from acrylics, letting some of the different paints dry and painting different lights and darks and drying. So I use drying in a lot of my... And a lot of my uh, commissions and other types of paintings that I do, the um, ones that I, you know, you put a, a lot more work into, I let the uh, drying pick up as a very good part of the painting itself. So as part of the technique. So here, these are dry right there. I'll just pick up just a little bit of light and just lighten up the tips of them just a bit. Pull just a bit. And just let some of that light just kind of hit through there. Gives a little bit more of a difference in the the flower. Let's put this edge back out onto here again. See this well dry. And I'll just push and shear it just a bit. 
And I like the different uh, looks of something slight that looks a little bit more incorporated and then out here that doesn't look quite so much. I, I like those kind of looks. Now, let's, uh, let's go back and refine just a little bit more. I'll take a soft pink here, some red, some red violet, a little cool. And I can lift off like this out just a bit to uh, take off some of that excess light. Or I can go back and forth a bit with this to uh, refine that until I get that look the way I want it to happen right in there. I want a little bit more movement going on in there. I don't like it to end quite like that. I want to... And so maybe I'll... And this is another way. Oh, this is one other thing that... And I just remember that, that this client loves transparency of petals. So I'll take some of my green, some of my burnt sienna before I finish this flower. We'll cool it with a little bit of the red violet because that's what I'm going to be doing to these leaves here. And I'm going to push this right into that flower right there on the edge. Right like that. Okay. And I know you just go, oh my, what'd you do to that flower? No, this is just all part of it. I'll put a little bit of pink in because that's on that side of that pet petal right there. And uh, this is something that I read, Sargent, John Singer Sargent, and it totally changed the way in which I painted my roses. And then I'm going to lift off. I'll set the petal here and I'll lift off. And that starts the transparency to that... Uh, the look of transparency to my rose right out here. We'll just set that in like that so I get a little bit of that green kind of transparency there on that rose, see? By working that through. Sargent always says you don't paint, to paint transparency, you don't paint with transparent colors. And I read that and I was like, what? You know, he says transparency. He says that's just a, a fooling of the eye. He said, uh, when, and I, I talked about this when we were painting some portraits. So you're painting this arm, this lady's arm, and the veil going over it. He said, to paint that, the look of that veil, you would take the color of the veil and the color of the arm, and you mix those together, and that's what you paint that area with. And I was like, well, yeah, that makes sense because that's what your your eye is seeing both of those colors together. And so I started to think, okay, if I want to paint a transparent rose petal, I've got to take the color of the, the leaf and the color of the rose and put them together. And it works. That's how I do it. So I'm going to come back out here, put just a little hint of some light pinks here and there. Just as a nice little hint. And there you have your main kind of queen that's going to control your composition here. A lot of work, a lot of colors, a lot of pinks in there. She'll like that a lot. Um, you know, the question is here, do I, do I push in a little bit more in there? No, you don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. No. Just do it. Paint your next roses. If you, if you kind of like where it is, go on to your next ones. Let's go into our yellows. Let's take that soft yellow oxide, mix it up with some of these other colors here. Let's push that right into this rose here, where this one's going to go. Okay, a little bit smaller than the others and tuck it up underneath where it's formal. Let's get over to our reds and our pinks. And let's put a pinky kind of center in it first. And a pink little bowl shadow right down through there. This will be the cooler side down here, the lower side. Let's go into our quinacridone. Now, if these colors get a little bit bright, you can always add a touch of your pine green. Okay, let's go into our quinacridone. We'll push that in. This is These pinks are the unifying color, which will, will show up in a lot of these roses, right? Pinks and yellows and stuff like that. That's going to be the, the unifying colors here. Do we want more contrast? Well, then we can go all the way to our red violet and really give a nice little squirt of red violet right down in there. Don't go out very far with it. Push a bit of that right down into the bowl, maybe over this side just a bit. Look for some movement. All right, push right there like that to restate that bowl there really quite quickly. 
maybe a bit of some pink, a little bit warmer, yellow pink up here. So it gives me a, some definition that I can build my petals off of. Let's go with a little bit of Hansa. I like the Darulite also. Sometimes I will do this if I really want to get some nice yellow, is I'll splash some Darulite down the light side of the rose. And that really gives you a nice, warm, cool side of the rose right a bit, right before you start painting. Let's take some light, not quite the pure white. We know we're going to go there. But let's just pull in some of that color down and uh, leave a little edge there. And we'll take some of this, we'll pull the petal out, let it stop right there at that white here. You know, when I first started painting, I would always look, oh, I can't paint this because the white rose is on top of it. No, you just stop right before it. But for many years, it was like, okay, I had to think, what's underneath? Start with what's underneath and then paint it. And No, that's, no, you don't have to do that. I learned that after several years. But that's... Uh, keeps your your flowers really pretty when you you know you you just paint with what they need now you can always come back like I can like say I want to set up a little bit of that transparency over here let's just pop in a little bit of yellow right there just like that right over that other petal and then we'll come right in here like that and set that nice light of this rose right over that and boom here will come some of our transparency to that uh, to that part of the rose right there too you'll get some of that transparency now I don't like to have a whole lot right there so I'm going to take a little bit out with some and I just build the whites until I you know take out what I want to take out there leave just a bit of that but maybe a bit of that yellow hitting right there might be kind of pretty then it helps incorporate and travels your colors and it's that art thing we really like now I'll build to more light right up to the front here build some more light pull that around and I'll be a bit more casual few less petals because I'm away from my queen now the one who's setting the control to this composition now that's bad I just collided the two petals together and it makes them look like one big long one so I'm going to extend this and shorten this one so I break that into what looks like two petals there now and maybe a bit lighter so that uh, it's definitely you can see that and then let's just shorten down a bit right in here. Push that right into the center. I can take some of this softer yellow and just push some of that back through here like this. Little movement of petals inside. Just some movement. I paint for movement. You've heard me say that a thousand times during the Rose Challenge, right? I paint for movement more than anything else. I'm a movement painter. That's what I paint. Okay? I paint for movement. And always reorient your tray and take a look at it to make sure everything's going good. Now, see, I like this end here starting to compress down. And, and compress down, what I mean is disappear. So I don't want to do too much over there. That's what makes really pretty compositions, guys, is, you know, you don't define all the rows. You know, Monet, I've said this to you in all the classes, all my online classes. I say this to you. Monet always said leave 25%, right? 25% of the painting is undefined so that the viewer has uh, the ability to define the painting as what they want to see. You start doing more than that and you start to stiffen your flower. So you don't need a whole lot over here. I need some more of my little cooler pink in there. So I'll take a little bit of both my reds. And we want just a bit of that pink into our yellows here as we... But I'm not going to be super defined on my petals over here. I'm just going to let that end of the rose completely collapse. And maybe help close this off a little bit of pink here. Push a little bit here. Maybe close off just the idea of it there closing off. But I don't need to do a whole bunch there on that rose. Let's get... A little bit more towards white right up here at the very front right like that 
because that's what we said was one of our unifying colors, right? Is white. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we want towards the end of each. <clears throat> Sorry, got a little froggy in my throat there. We want towards the end of each one of these things a little bit more white, which will be some of that unifying color all the way down. Let's put some of that white unifying right in there on that petal right there. So that definitely lifts that petal right up on top of that other one there. We could, you know, chisel in another little one there, but that might compete too much with our main rose here, our queen, which I'm going to lighten up just a bit here. Just a little, just drag it a few times there, just to get a bit more white there. Maybe a tiny bit on the edge of our brush here to bring that through. See, this is all dry, and I'll just shear off the paint, and I'll let some of that movement there. I don't blend that out. I'm not a blender. Everyone always thinks, oh, you must paint in oils. You're so soft. No, I don't. <laughs> It's because I don't, I, I paint for tones. I paint for tones and stuff, and, I, and I, I don't blend. That's what I don't do. Let's put just a touch of light right out there. That gives just a bit more oomph to that. That stops, that looks pretty good, I think, for a secondary rose sitting there. Uh, maybe a stroke of yellow oxide, slightly lighter yellow oxide. Yellow oxide because it's not so bright would look good right over here to help close off that rose a bit more right there. Gives a little more body to the bowl. You can spin some of that right around here like another row of little petals. But you know, you don't need to do too much to uh, that particular rose. That's not looking too bad. Let's go down here towards our pinks. I'm just gonna move the pink right into the yellow. That just helps me get good harmony here. Let's move this. Now we're gonna go pink to white. So we'll put on some of this, and this rose will be more heading into a, a juvenile rose, not opened up all the way here. So let's go cooler with some quinacridone here. Now this rose is away from our center of interest, so you know the higher contrast red-violet we might not do into that center. If I can get enough interest there, Without having to do that red violet, that'll be the best. Matter of fact, let's just even soften that out just a bit. A little bit of that pink from that rose will pick up and hit that. And a little bit of that pink right up here. I'm always looking at the color harmonies, the movement of the colors through my flowers here. So that works, that works pretty good through there. That pink looks pretty nice in there like that and yeah then let's um get into some of this yellow and a little warmer right over here so let's try not adding that red violet this time because we're away from our center of interest right let's try let's oval shape this up a bit more here because it's a juvenile rose so go more towards the oval shape let's uh put a little bit of light, a little bit of yellow into this and override this petal or this rose with that. So I'll push that second rose back in the composition there like that. A little different. We'll see. We'll see if we leave it there or not. And just a little casual movement there. Here. A little I'm painting movement. I paint movement around goes pull that down into the bowl there like that let's head up towards our lighter yellow and white not quite as white as our front one up there so I'll push that a bit if I push it it goes right into that other pink here we'll push just a bit lighten that up that like that it's kind of a pretty let's get a um bit more yellow into this one. Just a bit more yellow happening into there. It makes kind of a pretty rose. You know, you get these roses, especially these David Austin roses that have all these beautiful colors in them. Beautiful hybrids. That's kind of pretty. 
but I want to get this a little bit more rounded up like this, a little bit more oval shape, because that's the juvenile rose. So I usually put on a lot of color and I'll just pull it a few times like that and let that movement happen in there. The nice thing about it is I now have a tremendous amount of paint on there and it's going to get this rose is going to stay wet for a few minutes and that's going to make it really difficult to paint. But it's acrylic so I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to put on a few things here and then I'm going to let it dry out and uh, we'll come back and revisit it. Let's take our quinacridone and this is what I do. I'll go back and Especially if I'm doing a bud, I'll go back and reshape that oval shape. Let's get just a bit more color. Reshape that oval shape of the rose. Maybe a touch of some lights coming around. Because as the younger, as the rose is younger, it's more of an oval shape here. So that makes it a little bit younger. Let's look at it the way it's supposed to look. Let that side kind of collapse down. That's not too bad there like that maybe just a bit of the loose pink out here we'll let that we'll kind of let that stand here maybe a touch of more light right on the side that's going up towards that our main rose up there our queen there just like that yeah just a little bit. I like little hits of color like that. That just does wonderful things. Let's take this one and pinkify it. There. Take a bit of our cool quinacridone. We'll drop it into the center there as well. Oval it up a bit. Push that around. Okay, a little bit into the, we could have a bit more into the bowl of that one as well little bit into the bowl here and a bit of yellow into the warm side there it's kind of pretty and then some light pink here more of the oval shape here and this one thing I I try not to set up a pattern to the roses when I paint. So I'll paint them all different kinds of ways. Now we got a nice transparent edge there. So we'll just put a stroke or two right up on top of that like that to hold that. And some more light. Let it diminish down. Little pink, little yellow together. Just kind of encroach on that. Close it down. Maybe a little edge. You can draw a little petal, just little petals. I'm going to let this go really cool violets over onto that side, which I really like that kind of color. I might act, I might bring that back out just a bit on that side of that rose here. And uh, come back around. And all the while, I've decided that I'm watching that, you know, my keying colors, you know, the pinks and the, the keying colors, that the tying colors, the whites. I'm watching and thinking about those all the time during this entire painting so that I'm keeping with what I, I feel the customer wants, see? So there's a pretty little, let's take a look at that. That's pretty little one sitting off to the side it goes very well with that one pulling your eye across but it's not completely um you know like that one okay so it's a little different let's put some yellows some of my yellow oxides right out into there let's get our tying pink color a little bit of both our warmer red cooler red maybe uh, just a touch of that into those right out there like that it's kind of pretty and uh, then we'll go right into some yellow and some light now I probably will paint out here with mostly yellow oxide not add any of that beautiful yellow that I put up there that Darulite and the Hansa and the reason why is I'm out of my center of interest I don't want to make a bright flower out here you could you know you, you just have to watch it but I'm out of my center of interest so I'm gonna first try to paint these out here little little buds 
opening up. I'm first going to try just to uh, paint them with yellow oxide and white and some of my pinks here. And uh, we'll see how that works without adding any of the super bright colors. All right, so I want to get some light in there, some light color there, because the white won't find it. But you get too bright, and boy, that'll bite you. Let's get a little soft pink, a little cooler over here. We'll grab that, push that in right over there on that side. Maybe that's a quick change between the pink and the yellow, so I'll just put a little yellow out there onto that. There's one. Let's bud shape this one up a bit more, go more of an oval here. Bright, now that's a little bright, so I'll just add a touch of green in there. Touch of the pine green just tones that real fast. So let's take away some of that brightness there like that. Push that pinks right down there onto the sides. We'll build the center right up through here with some yellow. And I think I could probably use a new paper towel. <laughs> that one is, that's what gets paint all over my hands. I'll get a new paper towel. Let's take a little bit of the white and the yellow here. Just strike across that. Pull down towards the bowl. And I'll just soften around a bit. Try not to do it too many times because I'll blend it and, I, and you'll lose the interest of the, of the movement of the color. So you don't want to touch it too many times if you're doing that. See, that's, that's not so bad. That's kind of a pretty little guy. He's just sitting right down there like that. Pulling your eye, circling it around a little bit there. Let's get some of this uh, cool color. And I just touched into, uh, many times I'll touch into extender. It's not to blend or anything, or even to keep it wet. It's because I like how extender, especially on a metal surface like this, slides. It slides over, and even when I go to shear off that color, it just slides it more. I don't put it on there to blend, really. Let's get back to some grays, a little bit of the green into that. Soft, kind of pinky gray color here. Push that into that rose. Set that back. Set these back edges, not quite so pink. A little bit more to the whites, or these softer colors that we have on that one. We'll go more towards our whites here. So when I want to whiten up the color, green is one of the most important ones there. That's what brings it back to white, takes it away from the pink, because they're complements, right? Right, because they're complements. So I do a lot of complement painting. When I was a decorative painter eons ago, I used to always think that, uh, you know, I, I would don't really follow color schemes that much or utilize them. And now, boy, I use it all the time, especially that complements. I paint with the complements all the time. Let's just build a little more light right there. Now, that's a bit much movement for a back flower, so I'm going to strike through that a couple times. Then I'm going to take ye old fingers, kind of clean, and push the bowl movement into that flower here, into that rose, which is going to soften it out while keeping some of that movement there. Doesn't need to be that much back there, see? And I can bring it all back out through negative painting there as well. We can put a bit of the light towards the back of the flower there, a couple of strokes, a couple of hits there, maybe a bit more of a light right in the very front here. Pull in, and that would probably be the most that I would do to that rose. I wouldn't even lighten up the, the bowl again. I just kind of leave that kind of like that. So that gets some major flowers. Now, before we go into our violet accent flowers, let's take some of our green, pine green, burnt sienna, cool it down with a touch of red violet. Let's come in here for our contrast. And we'll negative paint right up and around, pull some of this out, and look at our contrast there to see if that's gonna 
really pull the viewer's eye right there into the center where we want. Let's go a little more less violet, a little more green and here and push that over onto that side. That's going to look pretty good. We're going to have little stems which uh, you know you can drop on. Some of these get covered up with steps but it's nice to uh, have them in there just in case uh, you know you see them you you know the view you don't cover them up it's kind of nice and there's something about stems that just help you with a little bit of movement and stuff you know i like them let's put on some soft shaped leaves out here before we go too far and i do that just by pushing in the shape of the leaf and kind of determining the color i want but i'll pull off and soften it out and get that nice little mottled look to the leaf. I like that. So I get a light and dark to it right away here. And let's just pull that off like that. Sometimes I paint two-tone, three-tone leaves and uh, you know there's all different kinds of ways. Let's get this up a little cleaner right up in here. Right up there push a little model color into that area and I'll probably you know end up you know because there's going to be some brighter yellows like lighter yellow green so little Hansa little pine green here that I like coming through into some of this area that I just might start to add some of those colors in right now so I can see them and those that's kind of important you know I, I'll get those colors and it's also very important when you're painting to change the color of your leaves. You know, I mean, I had that problem for so many years. I cannot tell you how many years I painted that I used the same color of leaves always throughout the whole painting. So change the color of your leaves. And as I get to these big ones here, I might put a little two-tone, you know, to them a little bit more, maybe a little dark Sometimes I use a dark, sometimes I use a light, you know, a vein, kind of vein line, but change those colors. So now I'm just, I'm going to add just a few of them around here and look at those leaf colors because there's some accent flowers I wanted to add in some of that area there too. But I'm going to add a few other leaves changing their color. See, here's a totally different, it's not as light and not as bright color. So I've got at least three colors now into those leaves three three colors changing there and uh, we'll get a little bit of that green a little bit of that that works pretty good now let's also just for contrast we said we might do this put a deeper red a little bit of green into that red so it's not so bright here right down into here like this might be a back rose and we'll cover some of that up with leaves and stuff. But that's a great way to fill up areas of your design. Put something back in there. Like that's another rose back there. And it doesn't take very much to uh, say there's a rose. You know, it doesn't take very much color, movement, and all that stuff. Let's take a little softer pink. Push some of that through here. We won't judge this rose until we um, until we get the, uh, let me just turn that around this way and look at that. We won't judge this rose until we get the, all the leaves on and stuff like that. But we're looking for color now more than anything else. I want to lighten it up. But I don't want to bring it up to the same level as I'm doing these other ones. But I do want to lighten it up a bit. Here, which raises it up in the composition. The more light I put on it, the higher in the composition it comes. It's raising it up closer to these other ones here. So that's what I'm looking at, is how close I'm going to raise that up, see, into the composition. And I might leave it that real toned. I might put on a couple brighter pink strokes. See, if I take a brighter pink, let's just do that, show you. Take a brighter pink. Both my red, my quinacridone and my naphtha red light and some white so I make a brighter pink and I just strike that right across that that's starting to raise that rose 
right up here into the front. Does that make sense? See? As it's coming up higher and higher and higher. So I'm the determination of that. But I want to put in some other leaves in there and stuff before I get too wild and crazy. I'll reset my center here. Reset a bowl a bit. Here, and we'll leave that real soft for right now. Right back there like that. Okay, and <clears throat> now before we go fill up with leaves, we were going to go with maybe some blue violets here. Blue violet little flowers. You could fill this all up with roses. would be nice. That would be pretty. Blue violets to red violets. You could let your violets kind of change here. You know, we'll... But they'll be nice and soft against some of these blues that we have going out here. That'll be pretty. Let them go almost to white, too. Let's let this, let's try this violet to white. That's a pretty, so we'll let it go a little lighter here. Let some of those colors go up there like that. Pretty colors. And see, those are beautiful colors. You could push some of those over onto the, like into some of your roses, especially that main queen. She's carrying every color of the composition. Because she is just that important. So she wants to be noticed. So a little bit of that violet around is kind of pretty into the composition. Here. Little touches, accents. So we call them accents. We do just a little bit here and there. That's kind of pretty. I'm going to let that dry up a bit here. Because see, if I keep trying to pound it lighter and lighter and lighter, I'm just going to get thick paint lose control because it blends in and I don't want that to blend in. We'll take some uh, smaller little ones here. I usually paint just a few petals and then just let it disappear here. That's how I do the little, that's how I like to do the little flowers. <laughs> so I only paint really half the flower here and just let it disappear. Put on a few little, little color marks of it and stuff. It's kind of pretty. Here. And sometimes I get to I paint the petals a little bit more carefully. Sometimes they're just really fast. Get them done. Because these are the accents. You know, your main part of your painting, those roses are done. You know, these are the accents. Let's put some smaller ones. Because you can vary the sizes of these as well. Put a few smaller ones, little touches right out to there. Yeah. Could carry a bit more violet on some of it. So you just come back into some of your violet. Stroke back into it. Here, sorry, I'm off camera there just a minute. I call those guessing flowers. Okay, <laughs> your job is to, to guess what it is that I'm doing. Where we, where we say, I don't want to show you all my secrets, <laughs> you know? No, don't do it. I want you to go out there and paint beautiful flowers and have a great time because I'm, a, you know, art needs to grow. We need to grow. We need to have some of these beautiful looks. I've been very blessed by a wonderful, wonderful career. And I want everybody to have that, to go out and find that. It's really a lot of fun. So we'll go out and... Get some of this stuff, paint some beautiful paintings, get everybody enjoying beautiful paintings. It's really a lot of fun. And that's kind of pretty. We had some of this violet. Now, see, another way to do that is like take some of your violets here. Let's take it a little bit onto the blue side here, some of these violets and model down through this area like this with some of these colors, which is a pretty way to do it. We might add just a bit of that movement back into some of these. And then come in with some of your whites right on top and build them. And sometimes I'll do both right in the same, um, in the same painting. I'll do both ways of painting the small accent flowers because that's just different. You know, it just makes them different. And we like that, you know. So I just quickly make some little violet shapes. Let some of these colors just run out here. 
little ideas of other things. Kind of filling that all up. See that violet just fills that up. And what's nice about that is it's got come light side and then down more towards the shadow side over there. That's kind of pretty like that. Now let's put, let's come back in here. Let some of these greens, violets, some of these violets into your greens and stuff as well. Nice. Let's go up to some yellow greens, lighter. I like to model all of these kind of colors together. But let's start looking at, we want this leaf to come in like this and eclipse part of that rose and send it back down like that. Maybe a, a darker stroke over this side. So ones that are leaves that are in here towards the center, I will put just a little bit more into here. See? Just a bit more into them. A little lighter here and look at that let's pull in just a bit more here increase the size just a touch maybe even use the light there to give a little vein line sometimes dark sometimes light I change it around let's pull one back up over this way Coming back up underneath that one here. A little more green, a little light look to it. Some uh, different, different ways, different ways. A little darker, a little more toned, a little cooler, so a little bit of, of uh, quinacridone in it here. Let's get even a little cooler, darker yet here. Send it underneath this one. Right like that. Go. And um, we can make a few light strokes here. A few light strokes. Here, lighter colors. Now they've got a nice tangent line between all those leaves, all being exactly the same. So we'll have to fix that. Put out a few other little colors and marks here so that they don't all line up. And you can do a little bit of negative painting to this back one, but you don't want to bring it up too much because you know, you want it to sit into the back. We can do a little bit here. You know, just as long as you don't bring it up too far. Because negative painting like this, you know, shapes that back edge and puts in an edge. And it could raise something up a little higher than what you want in the painting. So you have to be a little careful. But it is pretty. Let's put some of these right out here with these little flowers. Some ideas, little leaves, little touches. You can make uh, more buds if you want. We can go put a little bit of green idea of a calyx. Some other green touches right out here. Just, you know, use the greens to help separate and lighten up. And uh, here you can use it for some contrast right in there to really uh, lift that yellow rose back up into position right there before it gets hit by those violets you know so yeah a little bit of little bit of negative painting here to help shape this uh, our main queen so pine green a little quinacridone is a beautiful cooler slightly cooler color you can go in there and paint a bit with to set some of those colors here, just like that. Really lifts off that uh, queen there. Now, I might lighten that up a bit, soften it up, put a, a stroke or two right out here. Not everywhere, but it just takes one little stroke or one little edge to give a little bit more of an edge to lift the, uh, the queen there. So she doesn't need it all the way around. Don't put it all the way around. 
that looks too perfect or precise there. And now we'll go around like that. Put some of that around. And I, this is where I like to do what I call my little brush dance. I just let the colors, I'm out away from my center of interest. I'm only carrying color, adding movement and interest. And less is more, so don't do too many of them. Okay. Now I like that. I'd like to see just a touch more to that, touch more light to that yellow green right in there. Let's get just a touch more yellow green. Just because it's a pretty little, and it just adds just that much more to the painting. Now it's it's a contrast thing, and my client does like to contrast, likes color, likes beautiful colors. And I think we've got that. And uh, so I think we've got that. Now, you know, the, the other thing about, you know, taking the customers and all that kind of stuff and, and making pieces. And if I had someone that said, oh, I want you to paint me a whole bunch of purple roses and all this kind of stuff, I wouldn't do it. Because if I don't make that customer happy and they don't like it, then, um, you know, I've got to try to sell that painting and they're not going to, uh, you know, that's going to be a hard one to sell. So if it goes way off the deep end as far as what is like established norms or out of what the society or my general buying customers are like, well, I won't paint it. <laughs> I won't I won't go there. I don't need to go there. You don't need to go there. It's better for you to paint something and, you know, take it to a show and start it that way. Put it up on an online sales and start it that way. Those are much better positions for you to start your careers that way than it is to go satisfy someone that maybe not really sure what they want and but they want a lot so you know i won't i won't i won't do that and you know some people say well you know you get money ahead of time and you make that and you know they make a promise and you get a contract and you do all that kind of stuff i've spent my whole life doing this kind of stuff and i have attorneys and i have think that it's not worth it <laughs> you know I paint to have fun, and you know if I can't, you know if I can't figure out what you know my customers and stuff want, something like that. It's just, you know, I I paint to have fun, and to me is I much rather take a painting to a show and sell it than uh, try to uh, satisfy a customer if I don't know exactly what that customer wants. So, painting for commissions and stuff is is uh, it's not quite as fun as just sitting down and painting really in in all reality because you know you have to paint stuff that you know maybe you really don't like or or something like that you know um it's not always that fun let's carry our color back through so we have all these pretty little violets and some of these other colors and everything let's um let's put in a color of contrast first a little burnt sienna into the centers of our violets here now only a little bit of that will show at the end so because we're going to do mostly yellows. But, uh, you know, you could do little red centers. Our customer likes red. But we have enough red and pinks going on in this painting. We could put some pinks on these uh, little flowers here, too. That would be great. Yeah, they would like that. And, yes, that's pretty good. Now, we will... Uh, Start out with some yellow oxide right on the corner of our brush. I'll start up here. We'll start out on what is going to be the light side of the brush or light side of the center. And I'll start tapping there. Now sometimes I start with my brush modeled. Well, most of the time I start with my brush modeled. But if I'm doing something like this, I'm going to sneak up on it and separate the colors here. Push them out. What, in other words, I don't model together. Many times you see me paint these, I'll model together Hansa Yellow and Yellow Oxide. But when I'm doing a slower painting like this, I'll separate them out and control the application of them. And so some of them won't get any Yellow Oxide. Some of them will get a little bit more. I mean, won't get any Hansa Yellow. Some of them will get a little bit more. 
these down here might be just fine with some uh, yellow oxide. Just tap through like that. That might be just enough to set them back. But up there at the top, they're going to need more. It's going to need a lot more. So, because it's up onto the light side of the painting there. So, there we forgot to do one in there. So, we'll just sneak some colors in. I used to always worry about being, you know, consistent and, uh, you know, perfect. And that just made my painting stiff. So, now I just have some fun with them. And uh, they get a lot lighter and a lot prettier. I might just blur the edge of that a bit with my finger. Or you can use the back side of your brush to tap through it and blur out into the flower a bit. Doesn't that make a pretty little center? Now let's uh, probably put a bit, close that down just a bit. Let's put a touch right over there. Sometimes I'll put a bigger touch and sometimes I'll tap quite heavily the side of the brush. So they're all a little different. I try, you know, the one thing that I learned, like, and and why I paint so many different styles, and you learn this from landscapes, is landscapes try not to make repetitive strokes. That kills your landscape. Well, there's some artists that do, and that, that's, but the general, let's just say it that way, the general thought, let's put a little dark light in that too. Uh, the general thought is don't make repetitive strokes. So I'm always kind of thinking about that, but that's helped me so much in my flowers, trying to not make repetitive centers and all that kind of stuff. So everything's a little different. You know, everything is just a little different. Now, I can take a bit of soft violet, real grade soft violet white here, and any centers that bother me just a bit, just tap the edges of it. And that'll push that right back and soften it right back in. Maybe pick up a bit more light right there. Set a little bit lighter in. Push them in. Incorporate it in. Move some color in and out. And um, blur it there like that, Dave, with your finger. You know, you get colors moving in and out. And that makes them kind of pretty. So, you know, like here's a main one here. I might just lighten it up and pull right into that center. Redress my brush. So I might paint, you know, like a main one here a couple times here. And that gives you even a little bit more, just that extra little bit there to that flower. And I like it when you push and blur that edge just a bit there. See, it makes a pretty little flower and they're different, you know. They're different. Let's put a little bit more light on that, right on that edge. Walk that across a bit. There, like that. It's kind of pretty. Maybe just uh, restate a little Hansa. But that's kind of an important one up there by the queen. It wants to be queen as well. It wants to compete with the queen. So, so have a little bit more work in her. Here, let's put a little bit of this light right up to it. Right up into it, the flower, pull in and out just a bit of that center. See, it makes a pretty little center to those flowers. An extra little step. And, you know, that's the, that's the main difference, you know. I paint all different kinds of roses, and it's kind of like, you know, I flowers and flower compositions. I kind of view them just like you're going out there and doing a, a landscape plain air, doing a two hour real quick study before the light changes. Paint stuff real quick. You don't worry about refining the colors and refining the edges too much. You, you try, but you know, you're trying to do it within a, a set time to get the lighting correct and everything. And I do the same thing with uh, flowers, flowers bouquets and stuff. And that's what makes them all very much different. I will uh, sometimes, you know, work on these as a time limit of 30 minutes, boom, done. And then sometimes I'll work in a little bit more. So we're what? We're at an hour and a half for the entire video here, for the entire painting of this tray, which is pretty good, you know, for, for me. It's normally a tray this size, 
you know, will take me an hour, hour, 15 minutes, somewhere like that. I have some of my favorite movies I put in and I can paint two trays during the movie. <laughs> you know, I time myself so I keep myself moving and stuff. Um, this one has just a little bit more into it here and there uh, than I would in some of the other, um, you know, trays and stuff. But, uh, you know, this is... Uh, you know, this this is going to be here to satisfy this customer. Now, let's look at what it is that we wanted to do. We wanted to bring the white out, and we had that. Now, we could. That's a nice, pretty pink. I'm not really too fine. The white is, is fine. The white's going to say fine. I could bring white out into that one a bit more. And that is, uh, you know, that's a good thing where you could put up a coat of sealer over everything and then try some more white up on top of that to see if you like a, you know an additional light petal the the client likes a lot of pink so i'm not too i'm not you know i'm i'm leaning towards don't add that you know don't add that in there i like the violets i like the violet as the accent so white travels through yellows traveling through through all, all of our centers and of course pink Every flower in here, except for these little guys, are carrying pink. And you know what? These little guys could carry pink. If pink is your unifying color, they don't have to have much. Just a little bit of real light pink here. Because my favorite customer likes pink. So I'll put on just a bit of that. Look at what that little spark does on that flower here. She likes pink, she'll get pink. We'll give her some pink. Here. Boom. Just like that. Now this would also be a, a tray I could sell really quite easily. Um, you know, if a customer didn't like it and stuff, but this one's gonna love it. So I'm not worried about it. And I do like those little bit of stems coming out there working that you know, and, and we have a little bit of, just a little bit of negative space around so everything opens up. The rim of the tray, what do you go about the rim of the tray? The thing is, um, you can, um, um, and I don't have any with me right here. I, yeah, I'd have to go get it. I, I really like, and she likes yellows, and we have yellow flowers in there, and so I really like to do like these kind of trays right here with some gold. I'm going to go get some because it's right over there. I'll be back in just a second. Didn't even give you any time to go get a cup of coffee, did I? Well, then I like the gold. I like the elegance that it adds to the gold. And so if I paint with a lot of transparency and stuff to the flowers, not as much like power, powerful opaque strokes. But if I paint with a lot of transparency and stuff to the flowers, it gives them a real elegant kind of a look. And uh, these have more of an elegant, what I consider an elegant look, the transparency that's running through them. And so I really like to go to like a gold. Now, sometimes I'd lighten up the gold or tint the gold uh, here. And I'll start to look at uh, what that gold, this could be lightened up just a bit. And I'll model it a bit too. So I'll do a couple of colors, a couple of different ways through it. And um, since this is a darker color, this will take a couple coats, but I like a bit of that beige gray uh, background to show through here first. But see, that gives a real kind of a elegant look to the edge of the tray. Also, a darker color would be nice, or paint a, a you know a darker color first, and um, then put some gold over it, so you have a bit more contrast. It all depends, um, you know. It's and you have to. Uh, uh, it's not. It, it's not about what you like. It's what about your customer likes. You know. So, you know. It's uh, now. I know this one likes color. This one likes gold. And most of she's bought these kind of trays before, and they had gold edges on it. So I know she likes gold. And uh, if I think gold works with it, gold is another way that's helping carry my yellow through the painting here. See. It's carrying the yellow all the way through the painting. Then uh, gold is a good cho choice for this. It's not always a good choice that you have to look at. But um, yeah, so that'll finish that all off. And we'll put a finished photo of this up. And I'll get it signed. And we'll notify the client. So hope you enjoyed it. This is 
this is what I do. This is what I like to do. You know, through most of my day, a lot of people say, what do you, you know, what's your day like when you do it? I'll go in and I'll film, I'll teach. And in the late afternoon, I like to sit down and paint some of these trays, paint some of the flowers like this. Uh, normally off camera, very relaxed. This is where I try different color combinations, different types of techniques. You know, sometimes grab your uh, painting knife and put some movement into some stuff. This is where I try. This is where I get a lot of joy. I love the teaching. I love abs I absolutely love teaching. What I love more than anything else in my entire career is watching the success of my students because then I know I'm a good teacher. If I can get them to have successful careers in the art field, then uh, I've done my job. Um, you know, and I always look back to my mentor that, you know, he pushed me into these types of directions and, you know, never be afraid by, by doing things, never assign yourself just one style of painting. You know, I answered one of those questions, this comments this morning on one of the paintings. You know, some people feel that you have to have a style. No, I paint it all, and I'm expanding it even more now. Um, you know, my mentor always told me 25 years ago before he passed away and, you know, launched me on my career, he told me that, um, you know, if you pick out one style, that limits your creativity. It really does, because then you're locked in to not violating that style. And that, there's a certain truth to that. So there's all different kinds of ways. We're all different. So don't feel like you have to have a style or one particular thing. Paint it all. That's what I do, okay? But more than anything else, have a good time with it because it is a lot of fun. And it's like this. This is a metal tray and a bit of paint. doesn't work, you know? I always tell my students, if it doesn't work, well, you can sand it off. But why sand it off? I always say just lower the price. <laughs> There'll be someone who'll buy it at a lower price, okay? But have fun in all things. Have fun, okay? And I'll see you on the other videos. Oh, Click like down there, would you? Would you do us that favor? Click like, maybe leave a little comment and stuff that just helps our distribution of our, our well, distribution, if I could say it, distribution of our videos, and we really appreciate it. And let us know in the comments down there something else you'd like to see. We'll be happy to try it. Give it a try, all right? Okay, I'll see you on the next ones.